my gosh. <laughs> Did you see what I said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling you were looking it up. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me get this in, in camera here. <laughs> the DOS, DOD ban, DO sharp, <laughs> topic du <de> jour. <laughs> I remember Twinkle, Twinkle. <laughs> if you you wasn't so fucking fat. <laughs> That's funny. True. I just like our traffic abilities and compared to their car. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's, <it. laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> That's all I have to say in, in the current year. <laughs> and I was like, man, how did these how did these used to start? And then I, I Google chatter podcast, fucking one comes up, I click it. Yeah, there's a little piano intro. It's really bad. <laughs> Wasn't it like, was it like, chat? <laughs> Something stupid like that. It's time for friends. It's time for laughs. It's time for the chatter podcast. Sure. <laughs> Man, the last time this Google app was open was in 2014, which is kind of impressive. Lots, and then, lots uh, has changed. Now we have, yeah. Yeah, now we have current version because you updated it to yes in 2020. <laughs> Roger Rabbit, if you, which I'm sure you will, vote regarding the age of slash spelled wrong suspect test, <laughs> what will you vote <laughs> and why? Thank you, Roger. <laughs> I would have voted no ban because it was fun to use and Pokemon's about having fun. That's a lie. Pokemon's about winning. Right. <laughs> Don't forget, a download link to an MP3 version of the podcast is available. Put it on your phone and listen on the go. That is some ancient technology before podcast catchers were a thing. Bro, now they need to catch us on Spotify. This will this will not be going on Spotify. I don't have I don't have the technology to get it on there. I don't even think I could find this uh, image. I might have to screenshot it from the video. <laughs> what the Chattercast background? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like we can all keep everything that existed from 2014, and it's probably better that way. It would be definitely better that we don't have that piano intro anymore. <laughs> I bet you I was the one singing it. I paused it after one second because I was over it, but... <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a nice, just, uh, hello intro, yeah. <clears throat> Can I get a hello? A hello? Welcome back to another episode. Such a terrible intro. <laughs> So the last one of these we did, do we have a topic du jour? Other than where have we been? <laughs> Life update, the Chatter Podcast. The last decade. <laughs> the decade that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Like, the last time the Chatter <laughs> Podcast... <laughs> Barack Obama was president. Yes. So. The Chicago Cubs had not won a World Series in 108 years. <laughs> you know, it's it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, but you know, I, I'm glad that like the fan base is totally still out there. Like, it's like the Animal Crossing fan base. We see you guys every day. Asking for Shattercast on the Twitter.com. We see it trending. <laughs> We're not blind. Asking you shall receive once a decade. This is all y'all get till 2030. I mean, Steven's out doing groceries. He's getting bugged in the, in the cereal aisle. <laughs> It's brutal out here. It's brutal. Um, <laughs> all right. So, hmm. Where where do where do we start? Do you wanna do you wanna start or do you want me to start? 
You can start. <laughs> All right, it is my 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 baby project, I suppose. Back in the day. <laughs> um, hello. My name is Richard, and I have a YouTube channel that you're currently watching this video on. It would potentially go up on the squared if we remembered the password, because that's where <laughs> collab content was supposed to go. <laughs> it had it has to be something about tennis sucking. There's um, there's no other. <laughs> it could have been like where's my burn or something. <laughs> So, um, I realized recently that, like, inside jokes are only funny when you're a part of them, because I was trying to explain to my wife, spoilers, <laughs> that why, why Esteban Scalderone <laughs> is one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I'll have to find. So for context, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to find. I know it was one of my bidding intros. It was on one of my showdown lives. It was me and Hugh Nation <laughs> talking about it. It might be one of my favorite clips. So like, back in the day, for whatever reason, you could get banned from uh, PS chats if you like said certain phrases. And everyone was like tab completing usernames, so we came up with a bunch of usernames that had the phrase "ban space scald" <laughs> in them because <laughs> because "ban scald" was a banned word in NU and uh, Esteban Scalder yeah in NU <laughs> and Esteban Scalderone was probably the best one we had. I think Urban Scalding was... was also good. <laughs> I was going to shout out Tyler for <laughs> Urban Scalding. <laughs> it's like a sleeper pick. Esteban Scalderone gets all the publicity, but Urban Scalding was like <laughs> doing his own thing. It was good. Yeah, so we would just go in the chat and bait people to tab complete our usernames and get them banned from the chat. Hey, can anyone give me some advice on this NU team? Horrible NU team. And they'd be like, oh yeah, Esteban Scalderone. <laughs> 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 banned. Big post Chicago. Oh, I saw your tweet the other day. <laughs> Someone got uh, found a shiny Trevenant, and you're like, "We actually had a funny gimmick Starf set." <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, Kathy. yeah." So, yeah, so like that's Flygon HG, who's like, he's like in the new wave of Pokemon YouTubers who do like challenge runs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. And, like, I don't know. I, like, I've watched a couple of them. I don't really get the appeal of the challenge runs because it's, like, this is the hardest way to play in Mons, and they win the run, like, the first time every time. So it's, like, is it really that hard? Like, this is Pokemon. Um, but, yeah, the main thing is, like, like, still today, like, if you go into Showdown and in the team builder you type Kathy and then hit Enter, it auto populates that set. <laughs> I just I just did it for the fans watching at home that I that's why I was laughing. <laughs> really funny. It's, kind of, it's really funny that it's still there. Like, I don't remember who we convinced to like make that a shortcut. Um, but they're probably like doing Long something gone. else with their life. Yeah. So like, Yes, like no one probably knows why <laughs> Kathy brings up Star Starberry Trevenant. <laughs> oh, you're gonna pop I know, it. I'm really disappointed with it, that it doesn't automatically make it shiny, but you know, the real ones know. That, that was the first thing I did, is I went and made it shiny. I'm just gonna drop a PK face in the NU chat really quick. I don't recognize anyone here. Yeah, I recognize Kushalos. And I guess K as well. That's funny. Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> so, like, some things never change. UPL, which started last week. And, uh, I play Kyo this week in NU, <laughs> in, in Gen 6 NU. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of amazing. 
In terms of mons, like, I'm basically playing, like, zero singles formats. Um, but I did get into VGC, so, like, play that on ladder. Um, and, like, in real life, VGC events are actually really, really fun. Um, so, like, before COVID, I was going to, like, some local tournaments and all that. And then, like, the last thing I did before COVID was a buddy of mine was living in um, Indiana at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, like, hang out for a weekend. I'll drive down to St. Louis and you can meet me there and we'll play Pokemon. <laughs> and we were at the tournament and we're like, look at these idiots wearing masks. Like, what's wrong with them? Like, why would you wear a mask? And then, like, three days later, it's, like, glow. I'm like, <laughs> no, one, no one can do anything ever. Um, so then, like, COVID happened, and there were no, like, in-person events. Um, and then they just started back up again recently. And I went to one in Indianapolis. I needed to be in Indianapolis for a work thing anyway. Right. So I was, like... Uh, kind of fly up a, a couple days early and <laughs> and do this. That's funny. Um, and, and you kicked ass, right? Yeah. Eh, I did okay, I guess. I, like, it was a very unlucky run. The team I brought was also, like, good in the format, but bad in that tournament in, predict in particular. Um, right. I ended up I ended up five and four, which was like kind of disappointing. But um, you know, didn't it, you start zero and three, and then came back and went five and one? I, I that's did. that's the most impressive way to spin that. <laughs> it is. I did start zero and three. Dude, the first three matchups were so terrible. It's like, all right, like I have Rotom Heat because it does really well into these like Groudon Eveltal teams that are everywhere and mm -hmm. all this. And then I and then I it's grout on Kyogre and I'm like I mean I don't know how I'm supposed to beat this like <laughs> it's like it's like when your grout on answer is a fire type that just gets dunked on by ogre it's like what is, what's happening <laughs> um but yeah like in person events are fun like you get to meet people and basically it's like everyone's super nice. Like, especially compared to on Showdown, because you're, like, actually sitting across from the person playing. Right. And, um, like, you find, like, a group of, like, a group of people or whatever. And I had, like, met some people at, at local tournaments. And, the, like, after every round, everyone comes back together and just kind of, like, just, it's like a mini therapy session. Like, the people who won their round, like don't say anything the people who lost like i missed play rough and then i got crit and then it was the worst matchup ever you're just like i feel that man i feel that <laughs> <laughs> it's like the great equalizer if you know how you feel bro <laughs> yeah it's like it's so funny because it's just it's too real <laughs> like it just it just really do be like that sometimes you definitely have the voice in terms of like current Pokemon because I think since this Chatter podcast came out in the last seven years, the only real times I've played Mons, when I got to college, I like kind of picked it back up because one of my math classes was really boring. And that was that hyper offense video that I brought you where I just kind of used an HO team in, in class at the back of the room. <laughs> and then... When Sword and Shield came out, I did a couple videos because I thought Dynamax was kind of fun, and then it got banned, and I don't think I've played since, to be completely honest with you. I just have been doing other things with my spare time, and I work way too much. So, um, in yeah, terms of in terms fair. of Pokemon, Steven's definitely the, <laughs> the connoisseur right now, and he doesn't even really play singles, from what I understand, so. No, I mean... I think VGC is just like it's a, 
it can be good. It goes through cycles of being really fun and being super unfun. Um, right. So, like, other games I've been playing, I guess. Right, um, yeah. I've kind of gotten into Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I'm not, like... I'm not like good at it or anything. I'm like diamond two level, but like it's fun. Um, and then the other game is called Super Auto Pets, um, <laughs> I which is amazing. One um, of it, your videos on it, and I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I was like, oh, this, is, "This is cool." <laughs> so like, yeah. So like, it's it's free, um, and it's on phone now like as an app which mm-hmm. is kind of great um but yeah like super auto pets is fun it's like you have 10 gold a turn and you just try to make like the best like different pets have different abilities and you just try to like make a good team and then you get paired up with someone that's like on the same turn as you and you try to get to 10 wins before you get like four losses or something like that huh that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So it's like random matchmaking, and each turn is a different player, but a player at the same turn as you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool concept, actually. Yeah, so it's like, you know, technically, like, you've had the same resources, right, like, mm-hmm. on that turn. So it's kind of cool that it does it that way. Um. There was a big update for it like a week ago. So now there's like a, a weekly pack where it's like these are like it's like this is the weekly like set of animals available to you and it's pretty good. Nice. What about Splatoon 3? <laughs> yeah, Splatoon 3 is going to be too hype, man. Like I can't wait to go back to Splatoon. And get absolutely dunked on by the people that have been playing Splatoon for like the last three years. And it's like, I'm not like terrible, but you're just, it's like, you don't have like the, the twitch muscle, muscle no. reflex. Like, <laughs> Dude, all the Dooley's players will just be rolling around in circles or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the first, like, couple months of that game being out are going to be a mess. Because I'm sure, if I know anything about Nintendo, like, there's not going to be, like, a, oh, like, we'll pull your Splatoon 2 info and be like, oh, you were, you know, A-plus rank, let's start you in B. No, everyone's going to start at, you know, Mm -hmm. level 1 F rank. So you're going to have people, you know, like little Timmy who's just picked up the game for the first time versus, you know, Jonathan who has, you know, played the game for six years, and, and, and it's like, and guess who's on your team? You know, it's like, it's, it's be... <laughs> Not Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be so savage for, like, the first couple months. Oh, man. I, I still um, think one of low-key the funniest videos I ever posted on my channel, this is another, like, inside joke kind of thing, but the title... The road to a higher rank than the Gumi ever achieved during his road to S rank series, part one. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> right before I go to college and sell everything, I'm like, one more, one more gut punch. <laughs> hey man, that was that was truly the road to S rank. It was actually a good series. I just stopped it after like fifteen episodes mm-hmm. or something. I thoroughly enjoyed it, going back and watching it again. And then I'm like, what rank did you get to? What rank am I? Oh, I'm really close. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, so, I, think so I, went and, I think I went two and one in that video. I didn't even do very well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, they all count the same. Mm. Um, so I guess, like, life update. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You could, a lot you of things first. have happened since 2014. <laughs> um, in 2014, I was, I guess, a sophomore in college, sophomore and junior in college, and I did graduate. 
Hey, mm. you 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 got to give us some credit. The last chatter podcast was 2015, actually November 2015. So we got to start right around okay. the, uh, <laughs> you know, cut us some slack here. It hasn't been that long. <laughs> so I graduated college. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a job in Arkansas, um, and like right at like right before I moved to Arkansas, I uh went on this date with this woman and it went well and then i moved to arkansas and it's kind of like wow that's kind of unfortunate because you know right. she's still a year of school in north carolina um and then she flew to arkansas to see me and like sorry if you live there but like no one's flying to arkansas like for no reason <laughs> Um, so we started dating, whatever, uh, her job after school was in Michigan. Um, I moved to Michigan, uh, to be closer to her and was working up there for fortunately the same company I was working for in Arkansas. I was able to kind of like just transfer to a different facility. Um, and then we got engaged and we got married and <laughs> yada 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 you uh, know <laughs> just skip over the important part yeah <laughs> yeah um during That's covid <laughs> right. i i proposed i proposed during covid so like all of the um all the jewelry stores were closed so i bought like a hundred dollar ring off of amazon that's and that was what I proposed to her with. That's so funny. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I did eventually get her, like, of course. Else. Yeah. Um, but it was like, you know, <laughs> it was what was available yeah. at the time. Out here grinding and um, sourcing what he can. Yeah. Yeah, we had like a whole, uh, we had our whole wedding planned out, um, and then like. We were like, oh, like COVID will be done by then. COVID will be done by then, and uh, you know, it was not. Um, so we got married at my parents' house, which was kind of fun, <laughs> with like awesome. ten of us. <laughs> um, so it was like it was actually really good. Um, so like we got married, and then uh, her job because of COVID kind of became remote only. So like she works from home. Uh. So we picked up and moved to North Carolina because it kind of, that's where we both went to school and it kind of puts us like closer to family and all that. Um, Felt like home. So we're in North Carolina. Yeah. uh, You know, we're in North Carolina now. Uh, We got our first house uh, in January. Oh, shit. And uh, yeah, so... When it comes to like posting on YouTube and stuff, it's uh, pretty low priority for me. Right. <laughs> like basically non-existent for. It. I um, I didn't know you guys had a house. I still thought you were in that apartment. So that's news to me. Congrats. <laughs> that's awesome. In this economy. In this economy. Yeah, there, there's a whole story with the house, but I don't think that needs to be in the chatter podcast. That's that's fair. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so after 2016, I was working at a hose factory, which may have made it into some of the content, some of the stories about that. And then I kind of just decided one day, screw it, I'm going to college, I need to do something with my life. And I got kind of persuaded and pathed into going up north to Thunder Bay because uh, I was originally just outside of Toronto. And I loved it. Awesome area. It grew on me for sure. Uh, great people. Graduated and obviously graduating into aircraft maintenance right when a global pandemic happens, when there are no more airplanes flying. It's not great for the job prospects. So, um I basically, during COVID, I went back home, hung out with my parents a little bit. I was on government subsidy for quite a while and just like 
really live in the life like hanging out with my dad and my mom otherwise i wouldn't have been able to see them as much as i did um and i picked up guitar which is something i always had wanted to do and that's probably like a big thing for me since the last time um you guys had really heard from me in a video is uh i play guitar it's probably one of my favorite hobbies now so that takes up a lot of time that normally would have been video making to be honest um i got a job at the thunder bay airport where i got contracted up north to like a native reserve way up in northern ontario by like the arctic ocean um and through that i met a company that was contracting to them so it's all contract on contract people you know in this industry and that ended me up in the Arctic working for them. So last summer, in the middle of July, start of August, I packed up everything I had into a Ford Fusion and drove it 3,700 kilometers or like 3,000 miles across the country and then all the way up north into the Arctic. And uh, that's where I live to this day. I'm now up in Yellowknife. And uh, it, it is what it is. Like I, I'm making the most of it. I have awesome benefits with work which allow me to travel around a lot. So a lot of time, my schedule is also a big part of why I'm always so busy because I'm doing 12 hour days, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., um, week on, week off. So on my week on, I basically have no time to do anything. I can't see people outside of work. Like I basically get home and go back to bed to go back to work. And then on my week off, I normally leave. I normally travel somewhere fun, go home, see my parents, go see friends because now I have friends all over the country and the ability to fly all over um, I also have international flights, Stephen, but I didn't uh, didn't want to dabble with it too much because COVID restrictions were still in place when I got my travel benefits. But now that those are lifting, I was thinking of doing more American trips during the summer and next winter. So could be fun. Yeah, I definitely told um, tennis that I was going to go down and see him in LA. My gosh, I mean, <laughs> you could pick, you could pick worse places to go, honestly. <laughs> Last time I went to Raleigh, I had a, uh, I got a speeding ticket on my way back. I think I told you that, right? I think so, yeah. <laughs> and they were like all perplexed with the uh, Canadian flag you had in your car. <laughs> I bet that's why I got it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, look at this guy. He Easy. thinks he can just come down here. Yeah. Easy pickings. <laughs> Do whatever. <laughs> um... So, I guess in terms of, like, stuff that I do <laughs> and things, <laughs> um, I really enjoy cooking. Um, I like to think I'm good at it. <laughs> um, so, like, every week we... We're like the like that young married couple where like we meal prep every week and like That's have cute. lunches like good to go and all that. And um like we really enjoy board games. Um, so we have and this was kind of something where like you know, like fortunately like we were able to do this throughout COVID because like we were both still working through COVID and like I mean, we weren't really spending a lot of money because, I mean, what were, what were you supposed to do? Um, right. So we got into, like, board game sale hunting and all this, and we have a collection of probably, like, 30 games or so. And we love, like, inviting groups over for, like, uh, dinner party slash board games. So we, like, print out, like, menus and, like, set up, like, the table and, like, make, like good meals so, like last time i made uh like breakfast burger which was um it was a burger with like arugula and fried egg oh my god and, like you know home cooked bacon and, and cheese and like caramelized onions on there and like a compound butter on the bun and all this and and like we make like homemade ice cream and like all this and then we play board games um pro like so if you're someone that's new to like newer board games meaning like not like the family games you grew up with and like 
there's right. like nothing wrong with like monopoly or things like that but there's been like really kind of like a renaissance a board game renaissance <laughs> um and uh there's just a lot of really good games out there um we really enjoy as like a good intro game to newer games this one called camel up and okay. camel up is basically uh <laughs> like your choices like each round it, it comes to you and it's like i'm either betting on a camel or I'm rolling a dice, and you're betting on the camels like racing around the track, um, and it's it's really fun and like uh, huh. the right amount of thinking. <laughs> um, I just googled and it, and there's there's like a lot of in, in camel up up to uh, eight players bet on five racing camels trying to suss out which will place first and second in a quick race around a pyramid. Yeah, so it's like it's really fun, and they stack on top of each other so like camels can carry other camels and stupid stuff like that. Um, but that's like a good like gateway game into like newer board games. Um, and then I guess like other stuff. Um, uh, I mean, there's work obviously, and then I'm trying to like stay active um but i hate going to the gym uh so i'm in uh an adult softball league oh nice um and then this fall i'm gonna be in an adult soccer league as well so like monday through thursday i'll either be playing softball or soccer um so that's like my I really don't want to go to the gym, but I I, I need to be active. So <laughs> for me, it's a good way for, to meet people. Yeah, for me it's hockey, obviously, because you know North. But I played a ton of hockey in Thunder Bay, and and I came up here. That was the first thing I looked at was a hockey league, and I think um, through one of the friends that I met here, we're gonna end up signing up for baseball as well during the summer. So that should be more than enough activity. I also run to work every day. It's like four kilometers so like a little over two miles and it's just it's like a nice little it forces me to run home as well which is good because it, you feel like you feel fine running to work in the morning but after a 12-hour shift like you don't want to run home but you don't have a car so you have to <laughs> it's good that it forces that exercise on you um that's great um the softball team i'm on mm -hmm. um it's, it's been a tough season um, we're 0 and 11. <laughs> that's, that's not great. <laughs> um, no. So, like, we're in, like, there's, like, A, B, C, and D division, and we're in the D division in the town I live in. Yeah. And, bro, like, there are people in the D division switch hitting, getting <laughs> home runs from both sides of the plate, like, over the fence <laughs> in the D division. And, like, Myself and one other guy are the only two people on our team who had ever played baseball before, like full stop, like ever held a baseball. And it's like <laughs> I haven't played since I was like ten. Yeah. But like I like know the rules, like I watch baseball and like like I can field grounders and like I can mm -hmm. I can play baseball. And like the other dudes on the team are like younger than me more athletics like yeah i was a bench player on a division one college football team and it's like bro but when you get a baseball bat in your hand you look like you are the most uncoordinated person on planet earth um and like everyone's super duper nice and like it's been really great like in general but it's also just like like last night was an achievement because we made it to the fifth inning for the first time without getting mercy ruled Oh my um, god! <laughs> it's supposed to be seven. It's supposed to be seven innings, but mm -hmm. we made it to the fifth inning. Um, so it's like it's 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 been a good time, and like <laughs> I've got a good attitude about it. That's important. That's the that is the thing um, I've learned in the last seven years that means the most is if you have a good attitude towards stuff, everything is fun. There, like you can make a shitty situation actually be. Like, oh, well, just look at the absurdity of this. 
So the funniest thing about mm. it is, um, so like I was sharing with someone at work, like, cause they're like big into softball or whatever. So I like tell them like, oh yeah, like we played last night and here's what happened, blah, blah, blah. And this guy was walking by as I was telling them and he's like, oh, like where, uh, where do you play? And I like gave the name of the league and he's like, oh, my buddy is an umpire in that league. And he was just telling me the other day about this terrible team. And Bull, I'm like, yeah, that's us, man. <laughs> it's the worst team I've ever seen. I can't believe how bad they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. I'm just like, you know, sometimes it really do be like that. Oh, that's funny. There's really not, like, a ton of people that I talk to online, like, I mean, we talk, like, occasionally. I still talk with tennis, like, almost daily. I mean, we're in each other's, like, Wordle rotation, so we send each other Wordle builds. So there's at least, like, that that interaction (laughs) daily. Um, And then, so I don't think I I told you this. So, like, the the funniest thing, um, so, like, the other person I talk to online um fairly frequently he was um person who ran the smogon uh survivor org which is an online reality game right um and it was survivor and um i was like going through like just a really like terrible time at at work in michigan and i'm like yeah, I'll like try to sign up. I don't think I'll get in or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I I did get to participate and I made it to final tribal council and got second place. Um, <laughs> I, I I didn't deserve to win. The person who deserved to win won, which was good. He played the best game. Um, and like the person who ran it was like super nice. So I, I still talk to him. But like the smoke on like the survivor org was it's like hilariously well done like the challenges and like everything it's it's crazy and like so well thought out like these guys spend like like hours and hours um like creating like the game and like setting up the challenges and and all that it's it's really good um and like the funniest is uh you remember laurel Mm mm-hmm yeah I don't think personally, so he was but I remember also the one of the people who was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was also one of the people who was running it. And he made probably the worst puzzle that has ever been created. <laughs> so, like, there were, like, you know how, like, there's, like, in Survivor, it's, like, you can find advantages and stuff like that. So they would hide, like, in the Discord server, like say like one of like the bots that helps runs the game like the username would change and have like like uh an emoji or something and if you like type that emoji in they'd be like all right you've unlocked access to this puzzle to try to get this advantage yeah and um the one laurel did like to this day i still don't understand the answer because it was like (laughs) It was, like, a whole bunch of random stuff, and then it was, like, Jack Harlow and all the stuff about basketball, and you were supposed to find, like, a line from a Jack Harlow song, and that was, like, the answer, and it was the dumbest thing ever, and to this (laughs) day, I contend that it was a terrible problem. I never, like, I didn't cheat or anything in the game. But like I, I like I legitimately told one of my coworkers at the time. I'm like, I need you to help me solve this puzzle. I'm like, someone else has clearly like already solved it because it's been like a week. Right. But I just need. To, <laughs> he's was, like, I have no idea. It was bugging, you. Yeah. Saw the answer. It's like, it just doesn't even make sense. Like it just makes no sense. Oh man, that's funny. But yeah, like, dude, people people go hard in those things. It's crazy. I actually, I'm blown away like looking those, back how those. much time people, um, like invest into Smogon in general. Like, I have a lot of respect for like all the people who do articles and like um, writing the analyses 
for the bonds and shit because i know i dabbled in that for like a little bit and they're not easy like they're time consuming and the fact that like every year there's fresh blood coming in and just like keeping the website going i'm like damn knowing now like how valuable time is yeah engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Like, I can't believe it. that man is like still leading so many things. It's crazy. I know how you have time for it. Crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Um. So I, I know you're all wondering. Mm-hmm. I know you're all wondering, like, what was it like telling, you know, future wife? that I played competitive Pokemon. You know, I gotta say that it was better than I thought. <laughs> That's was, all I have to say. <laughs> was it? I think it was Joe Swagliff. He's like, competitive Pokemon's never prevented me from getting laid. It's never helped, but it's never prevented it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's never helped. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, you know, maybe one of these days if I want to read you all, you know. But... <laughs> if only, um, um, if only Game Freak could make a good game. I could get back into it. Have I moderate expectations for Scarlet and Violet. I will probably maybe buy them. I bought Sword and Shield. And played them and went, eh. Like, they're clearly not the best games they've ever made, but, like, in a vacuum, they're fine video games. Um, They just kind of are lackluster compared to, like, what came before it. That's the thing. Like, everyone's expectation is too high, I think, almost, because, like, the DS era was so good. And now it's just like, oh. But if you just put Sword and Shield in a vacuum, they're fine. Yeah, I mean, the DS era was so good. And, like video games at the time were just different than it like Mm -hmm. and video gaming culture in general was different at the time because like a lot of what they were doing was like no one's done this before and whatever it's so crazy and all this and it's like and now it's kind of like oh like it's a game that's like these other games but it's pokemon themed (laughs) right and and has these limitations that other games don't because (laughs) <laughs> because for whatever reason well like Nintendo is just like so good at just like getting random crap wrong for no reason like, and then and then doubling down on it <laughs> right right and it's just like I I feel like not to get political but I feel like you know them not including every mon and all that like that's fine. Like, in some ways, it makes metagames, like, more interesting when you have more limited options. I agree. Um, but then, like, there's just some things that are just, like, so frustrating, like, to this day. It's like, all right, I'm, like, going online to, to trade with someone, like, so I can get, you know, my team to bring to this tournament. Why why do I have to trade six mons individually and watch this long ass animation <laughs> every <laughs> time? The most important thing of all time, you're trading a mon. Right. Like make a or spectacle like, out of it. Right. And they did like a lot of things to make getting like competitive mons easier where it's like, oh, like you can get bottle caps and like move you know, Move Tutor is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Move Tutor is, is free. And, like, you can do raids and get these candies to get your stuff to level 100. It's, like, I think there's got to come a time where they're just, like, if you want to go on the ladder in game or whatever, you should, like, I don't care if they call it, like, you're renting it or it's a simulation or whatever they want to call it. But you should be able to just make a team, like, on Showdown and just go play because no yeah. one plays art because it's just like even like with all the stuff that makes it easier it's like i'd rather just gen the mons <laughs> or yep. just play on showdown where i can open my phone and click search for a battle and i'm in in five seconds 
that would be cool actually if there was some kind of like brain simulation kind of thing almost like battle cds from xd gale darkness but instead it was like oh hey you're dreaming now what what pokemon do you dream of <laughs> and you just like create it that could at least be kind of canon or lore right right like yeah. because it's just and it's a whole thing on like bgc twitter where people are like if you gen your mons you're cheating blah blah, blah. it's like I mean, it's the same stats. Like, if you yeah. want to breed your mons and do all that, like, good for you. And, like, and just, like, missed opportunities where it's like, oh, we have bottle caps. You can set an IV to 31. Give us one that sets an IV to zero. Like, you mm -hmm. think someone's going to do Dynamax Adventures 50 times to try to find, you know, a, a Palkia with zero speed, zero attack? Like, <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I actually got sucked into that the other day. I was I opened Twitter and my feed was all a bunch of like VGC drama and I'm, it's like based on your recommendations. I'm like, I don't know what tipped this off, but sure, I'll read through the controversy and the drama. And yeah, basically it was like, if you gen, you're bad. And then there was a bunch of people like, no, if I gen, I'm fine because like it's the same stats. Who the fuck cares? I, don't know. I think I think Dennis liked a bunch of them, which is why they were recommended to me. <laughs> yeah, Tennis is... is his twitter feed ruins my twitter feed we need to get him on the pod <laughs> Ch my gosh Ch chattercast episode six <laughs> now now so, back so, <laughs> so unironically um he and i have been playing nintendo switch sports <laughs> in gaul <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of goaded. It's kind of goaded. <laughs> I wish I had more time for my Switch. Because, like, I've bought a ton of really good games from the eShop that I could play through. I have a bunch of really good games on Steam, too, that I want to play through. And, like, Breath of the Wild, I never finished the DLC, despite it being one of my favorite games I ever played. And uh, that you never played. It still blows my mind. Hey, I've played it. <laughs> I just stopped. Right. After like the first elephant thing, the right. first device. I mean, that's fair, I suppose. You like, you got the gist of the game. It wasn't. I didn't like it. It just, I don't know. I just like, it just, it fell out of rotation. Yeah, that's fair. But I feel like with Splatoon three coming out, that'll be in rotation for a little bit for sure, and. Um, I'm I might be the most devastated person about the Mario Kart DLC. I'm not. I haven't bought it. <laughs> partly because I have no time for it, but partly because I'm just like, you, no, like, make a Mario Kart Nine, you cowards! This game has been out for almost ten years. That's something that's been around since the last time there was a chatter podcast. Mario <laughs> Kart Eight with all the DLC, and <laughs> they just keep releasing it. <laughs> I know. Well, and what's and what's so crazy about it too is that. Um, like, it's the same, like, I don't mind as much that it's like, oh, like, it's the same art style, and it's the same, uh, tr even, like, the same tracks, obviously, I'd, like, everyone wants new tracks, mm -hmm. um, but, like, the big thing to me is that, like, it's the same racing mechanics, is what mm -hmm. gets me because it's like if you think about like oh like when we jumped from uh you know double dash to mk Wii and like in from this game to that game like they felt different yeah and completely it's like, different racing point, it's like, right like at this point it's just like the same racing <laughs> yeah um well I still love your quote. It might be one of my favorite things I've read on Discord, and it was something like, um, have you ever seen a company make a sequel to their really good game and just completely ruin it as much as Nintendo just did? Right. Well, like, they took out the only, like, fun mechanic right. of, um, of hopping, and then they also somehow managed, like, everyone was so hyped for, like, two items but two items also kind of ruins the game. <laughs> Completely. 
on it's not honestly it's so chaotic it's not even really fun like in mk8 if you got sniped by a green shell or something you're like damn someone threw away their protection as like an offensive opportunity and i got got it was probably a smart bounce but whatever like you can respect it when someone gets like triple green shells triple mushrooms and they're just like pew 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 pew, pew. it's like they're just shit flying around everyone from like third place to ninth place gets stars just like that <laughs> you get a shock in 12th and nothing happens <laughs> right right yeah i mean some like the double items are just i i i can't believe they somehow made it worse <laughs> like i can't believe they play tested it and went yeah this is this is good this is the level of chaos we want out of a mario kart game <laughs> right yeah it, it really is just like who thought this was okay <laughs> like and that's no why one, I was like, no one uh, I, I played Deluxe for a while. Um, I was actually on a leaderboard right when it came out. I was like 13th or something at Mario Kart Stadium. Um, but like, I, I don't kind of, whatever. Um, I was never that good at the game. And then, um, yeah, I just basically went, well, there are much better games to play. And... I like played it at parties every so often and now don't even do that. So I'm like, I'll just wait for Mario Kart 9 to come out. And then when they dump, like, what is it, 48 more tracks? <laughs> like, or is it 32? Or is it 16? I think it's it's a lot. <laughs> like, they, I don't, they, I yeah. don't know exactly how many, but it's a lot. An another game's worth of tracks on top of this game. And it's just like, oh my god. And you're still going to get Super Bell Subway every time. <laughs> It's true. I will say this as someone that got the DLC because I'm a sheep and bought it. <laughs> um, the the one truth is that if Coconut Mall is an option, everyone votes for it. Like, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Good to see nothing's changed. Yeah, it's like Coconut Mall is up there. Everyone's like, hell yeah, <laughs> let's do it. I'm down for some Coconut Mall. <laughs> Coconut Mall is an unrivaled track. It really is amazing. Oh, man. I mean, it's just it's just really good. It is. It's just really good. Um, yeah. I guess... Uh, I mean, that's like, obviously, like, the really short and condensed version, but that's kind of like my life update i guess um we have a cat <laughs> yeah i, don't know if I said yeah. that she's been sitting here nice and quietly the whole time i want a dog um, i just can't justify it with my lifestyle where i'm working 12 hour shifts one week and then zero hours of work the next week so like i travel one week i'm not home the next week i'm home but i'm always at work like i can't can't do that yeah, that's fair. Lone that wolf is, uh... mentality. <laughs> I guarantee uh, someone in the comments will hear that too and be like, so let me get this straight. Unlike seven years ago when you were always at school and stuff like that, you now have one week off every single <laughs> like every other week you have an entire week off, nothing to do, no no responsibilities during the day, and you haven't made a single video. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, that's good stuff out here. <laughs> Worst YouTuber oh. ever. Okay, so I want to say I'm gonna say this because it goes along with the whole like why are there just weird things that Pokemon gets wrong, mm -hmm. and then this is probably like the last useful input I have into this chatter cast. <laughs> um so like why is why does Zation exist? <laughs> like you know they decide there's, to like, give a there's power Yeah. Right, there's power creep and then there's Zation. They're like, let's give this thing the best typing <laughs> that has ever existed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good start. Yeah, and you're like, that's that's like that's fair, like typing isn't everything. It's like, all right. So, like, 
it, it's like a steel type, right? And like it has to hold like this big heavy item like to get its steel typing. Like so it's probably not that fast. Like steel types are pretty slow, right? It's like no, it's base 148 speed. Oh, okay. Um so what's like the What's like the the rub? Well, it only has base one hundred and seventy attack. Uh, all right. Well, intimidates everywhere. It's fine. It gets free plus one when it switches in, just cause. Cause why not? <laughs> That's the sure, kicker for me. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like sure, that's fine. But but also but also, we're gonna give it fighting coverage because <laughs> it really needs that too. This is like who thought this was okay? <laughs> like, did, like earnestly, who did thought it, this was okay? Did it get banned from Ubers? I don't remember. I maybe heard something like that. I think so. And if it didn't, it should have. <laughs> <laughs> Which like blows me away. Like, just a regular like cover box mod would be like Kyogre getting banned from Ubers. <laughs> just like what? <laughs> It's so good for no reason. Like, I know they wanted it to be, uh, you know, it's the box legend. Like, you want it to be decent. But, like, there's good and then there's Zation. Like, it's so stupid. I feel like they they were um, they were upset how much they fucked up uh, Primal or whatever. Whatever that, like, ultimate mon in Ultra Sun and Moon was supposed to be. Ultra Necrozma? Is that it? And they're like, this is supposed to be the greatest Pokemon of all time, blah, blah, blah. And then it isn't actually that good. And then they're just like, all right, fuck y'all. Stand back. Watch this. (laughs) You want an ultimate Pokemon? (laughs) Yeah, it's like this time for real. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, Evertol's still gone. You thought I was playing playing last time, this time. (laughs) And, And like... It just gets, and it's also like we're gonna give it a hundred base power steel move that does double damage to Dynamo, which is yeah. like the main mechanic of this generation because it just needs something else to make it better. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they pulled no punches. Right? Yeah, it's just moments like that where it's like you guys know how to make a good Pokemon. And then you make Toxtricity in the same generation. <laughs> it's like <laughs> such cool typing, such good design, and it's just terrible. <laughs> it's like, how do you give a Pokemon Boom Burst and make it bad? <laughs> Speaking of Boom Burst, Chatter Podcast, our sponsor, Chatter, Mr. Uh, Chat Hot himself, also a purveyor of Boom Burst. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you for welcoming us back into your homes, into your ears. Um, we'll yes. do this again sometime. <laughs> we'll see you guys in 2030. All right, final no, thing. The Canes, the Canes are going to win the Stanley Cup, my dude. Mm, 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 uh, I'll pick Colorado over the Rangers in six for my cup final. Oh, yeah. I mean, Colorado is just straight up the best team, but I really hope that the Kings can do it. (laughs) Also, the Leafs got robbed. (laughs) Yes, they did. They really did. Don't get me started on that. I was at game two (laughs) and I was at game five. I spent like $2,000 to go to both games. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I took an hour off work for game seven to watch it in my room and i just went to work sad <laughs> <laughs> this, this sounds this sounds like a you problem <laughs> my boss gives me a thumbs up when i walk in the door and i just look at him and give him a thumbs down and walk by him <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tough out uh, here it's it, tough out here it's not easy all right um Thank you, everyone, for listening, and uh, goodbye.